Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. These days, newspapers are flooded with news and articles related to COVID-19. For civil services examination, unless something dramatic happens, a cure is invented, a vaccine is invented, or any major announcement is made, an aspirant should not read articles related to COVID-19. This is the best time for you to revise your static portion, revise the current affairs of the previous months, you should not be, ideally, spending more than 30 minutes on the newspapers. Today's newspaper is almost entirely focused on COVID-19. There is one column that we will discuss and couple of newspaper articles and then take up the practice questions. So let's get started, beginning with a newspaper article on page number one of the Delhi edition of the Hindu. Prime Minister Modi addressed the nation yesterday and announced a total lockdown for 21 days. This Prime Minister said is the only way to break the chain of transmission. And the Prime Minister said, if we are not able to adhere to this lockdown sincerely for 21 days, India will go back 21 years. This lockdown will be in effect till April 14. Yesterday also, the finance minister announced some steps. For example, deadline for filing income tax returns and GST returns have been extended to June 30th. Also, you can use your debit card to withdraw money from the ATMs of other banks for three months without being charged for doing so. Many other steps were taken. Something else also happened. In another significant development, MyLab, which is a Pune-based manufacturer, became the first indigenous manufacturer which was approved for developing and deploying its kits for COVID-19 testing. Can be a relevant statement for your prelims or your state-level public service commission examinations. Now let's look at another news on page number one. The first modern Olympic Games were held in Athens in Greece way back in 1896 and for the first time in its 124 year history the Summer Olympic Games have been postponed. Tokyo Olympics originally scheduled to be held in July August 2020 they have been postponed to 2021 that means for the first time the games have been postponed but if you look at 1916 Olympic Games were not held because of World War I. Again in 1940 and 1944, because of the World War II, the Olympic Games could not be held. Can be an important statement for your prelims examination. Now let's look at another news on page number 15 and this is something we anticipated yesterday. Afghan presidential elections were delayed. Even when the elections were held, it was marred by violence as well as low turnout. Even the declaration of results took a lot of time. And when the results were declared, two candidates claimed victory, Ashraf Ghani and Abdullah Abdullah. Both these gentlemen organized their own swearing-in ceremonies. Now what happened? Yesterday, US Secretary of State visited Afghanistan to try and convince both these gentlemen that you should come together to form a unity government for the prosperity of Afghanistan. Ultimately, it could not happen. And now in a significant development, what United States has done, it has slashed $1 billion A to Afghanistan. This is something we anticipated yesterday and that's exactly what has happened today. And that is what you need to understand from this newspaper article. Now let's look at the only column that we are going to discuss in today's newspaper analysis and that is ironing out wrinkles in India's pandemic response. First up, few facts. If you look at the data, more than 80% of the COVID cases, they are mild. That means no hospitalization is required. These cases won't lead to death of individuals. In fact, the mortality rate varies between 3% to 0.25%. Most affected are elderly and those with weak immune system. Smokers also are more vulnerable because their respiratory system is under attack. This article focuses on 
India's health system and asks, is India's health system equipped to respond to COVID-19? Countries such as Italy, United States, they are struggling despite the fact that they have the world's best health care system. Let's look at the data. In India, we have 70 hospital beds for 1 lakh people. We have 2.3 ICU beds again for 1 lakh people. This number for Italy is 340 hospital beds and 12.5 ICU beds if you look at Italy. And look at what is happening in Italy. The worst crisis anywhere in the world is in Italy right now. This number for China, China 420 hospital beds for every 1 lakh population and 3.6 ICU beds for every 1 lakh population. So what is it that we need? We need more hospital beds. We need more ICU beds. On top of that, we need more masks. We need more ventilators as well. If you're reading newspapers, you would have read that Kerala and Maharashtra, they have reported more positive cases. Why? Is it because more people have been affected in these two states? Or is it because more people have been tested in these two states? So what is it that we need right now? We need more testing as well. Let's say for example, Maharashtra. Maharashtra will be more affected. But within Maharashtra, there will be an area which will be more affected than the rest of the state. Can this area be self-equipped to handle the crisis? No, which means the rest of the state will have to come to its rescue. Not only the rest of the state, but the other states as well. That means to respond to this COVID-19 crisis, we need cooperation from all the states in India in terms of more nurses, in terms of more doctors, in terms of equipment, etc., etc. In China and Italy, hospitals were rapidly constructed to accommodate infected people. But we can't do that in India. Few days ago, construction company Larson and Tubru, LNT, it announced that we can also do it. We can also rapidly construct hospitals, but even that will take three to four months. So, what's the alternative to rapidly constructing hospitals? The alternative is trains. Trains can be converted into hospitals, and these trains can easily move from one place to another. University dormitories. They can also be converted into treatment centers. More coordination is required with the private healthcare sector. But what about our healthcare workers? These healthcare workers, they go into the communities, they trace the people with symptoms and then treat them. What is the success formula of countries such as South Korea, countries such as Singapore? What is the success formula? How have these two countries been in a position to tackle the COVID outbreak? It's the ability of their healthcare workers, the ability to locate, the ability to test, the ability to treat these infected people. India, on the other hand, faces an acute shortage of qualified healthcare workers in India. Let's look at the data. We have 3.4 qualified doctors for every 10,000 people in India. At the same time, we have 3.2 nurses or midwives per 10,000 population. What about China and Italy? China has 18 doctors per 10,000 population. Italy has 41 doctors per 10,000 population. China has 23 nurses or midwives per 10,000 population. Italy has 59 nurses and midwives per 10,000 population. So what we need, we need more healthcare workers. On top of that, there is another problem. Even these healthcare workers that we have, they are concentrated in urban India. Not only concentrated in urban India, there is regional variation as well or regional imbalances as well. For example, Kerala and Bihar. In Kerala, we have 3.2 doctors per 10,000 population. And this figure is only 0.3 in Bihar. 
so our response will be poor in rural india our response will be poor in areas where healthcare workers are less on top of that we need to ensure the safety of these healthcare workers as well one reason for that is we are already facing shortage of doctors and nurses that is what you need to understand from this newspaper column now let's look at the practice questions first for prelims and then for mains with reference to provisions of government of india act 1935 which of the following statements are correct establishment of an all india federation correct provincial autonomy with a government responsible to an elected legislature correct diarchy was introduced at the center correct the act separated for the first time provincial budgets from the central budget no this was done in 1919 so which of the above statements are correct 1 2 and 3 a only a is the correct answer question number 2 the disputed territory of golan heights is bound by which of the following countries let's look at the map israel lebanon jordan egypt is not part of it so 1 2 3 c is the correct answer question number 3 recently india and netherlands launched the second phase of lotus hr it is associated with which of the following b sewage treatment plant lotus stands for local treatment of urban sewage streams for healthy reuse question number 4 Consider the following statements regarding individual satyagraha when british made india part of the second world war without consulting the indians the indian national congress at that point in time sought it fit that we should protest india being dragged to the second world war and for that individual satyagraha was launched the first individual satyagrahi was gandhian vinoba bhave The second one was Jawaharlal Nehru. So first statement is wrong. Subhash Chandra Bose gave the slogan "Chalo Delhi" during this movement to mobilize people. This statement is wrong because this slogan was given in 1944 during the march of Indian National Army. It was preceded by the August offer of 1940. Correct. So only three. C is the correct answer. Question number five. with reference to kaveri crater which of the following statements is or are correct number 1 the land between present day nilgiris and kodai canal is located on the crater correct it is volcanic in origin no it is not the palghat gap is part of it correct so 1 and 3 d is the correct answer let's look at the practice questions for mains answer should be in less than 200 words question number 1 poor health and nutrition status of women are the primary causes of the increasing disease burden in the country thus optimal nutrition and good health status of women is crucial for our population across generations elaborate question number 2 covid 19 is a wake up call for governments worldwide that basic amenities such as healthcare and education cannot be completely subcontracted to the private sector critically analyze that is it from our newspaper analysis for today thank you for being with us have a great day